Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to be taking a look at the basics of JavaScript events. Okay, so today's video is going to be perfect for people who are just starting out to learn JavaScript or you've got a bit of experience under your belt and you just want to get a recap on how the events work. Okay, so of course, the first question here is going to be what exactly are JavaScript events? Well, essentially, they're going to allow you to react to when certain things happen on the page. So for example, when the user clicks on a button, I want, for example, a drop down menu to show. Or another example might be when the user clicks on a submit form. I want some sort of validation to happen. So basically you have the event and then you have the action. So in today's video, we're going to cover four main topics um, around the events to of course gain an understanding of how they work. So the first topic covered is going to be the usage of the very basic HTML inline um, events. Okay, so these are things like your on click, which you'll see on many beginner tutorials. The second topic covered is going to be the usage of the add event listener function and this one here is arguably the most important. The third topic is going to be the usage of the JavaScript event object and these ones right here are going to tell you information about the event which just occurred and the last topic is going to be the difference between a standard JavaScript function and an arrow function when it comes to the events. So, Hope you guys enjoy and learn something from today's video. Let's get right into the first topic here, the inline HTML events. Okay, so starting off with the most basic form of a JavaScript event handler. Okay, so right here I've got a fairly straightforward HTML file and we can see right down here I've got this div with an ID of box and I've applied some fairly straightforward CSS styles to this box. So now we can see in the browser it's going to look something like this. So if I go back inside the text editor we can see inside the actual HTML for the box itself we can see it says on click alert hey decode. So this right here is the most basic form of a JavaScript event and you'll find this style on many different beginner tutorials out there on the web. Now of course it's quite self-explanatory what this does. When I click on the box I want this to say alert hey decode. So now if I was to go inside the browser we can see upon clicking on the box we of course get hey decode right there. And that is the most basic form, like I said, of a JavaScript event handler. Now, of course, if you're using a text editor like Visual Studio Code, if you go inside the actual div here and you specify, for example, on or just on, we can see there are many different events to choose from. And of course, when doing your own project, you're going to be Googling these things and finding out exactly what type of event you need to use for your own scenarios. An example might be the on mouse over event and essentially it's going to allow you to react to when the user hovers their mouse over the actual div or the box in this case right here. So for example I can just say alert then I can say something like um, hover okay just like that. So now if I was to save this we can we can see of course we actually have two event handles right here the on mouse over and the on click and of course that is perfectly fine and valid to have. So now saving this right here going inside the browser we can see if I was to hover over the actual box we get hover right there. If I was to then click on the box we also get hey decode. So right there we can see an example of adding the two events right there. Now what is the problem with this uh, style of event handler? Well you can't actually do much inside these two um, inside these quotes. Okay so of course you can do quite a few things inside here but of course once your project gets more complex and you want to do many different things inside the event handler you're kind of restricted as to what you can do inside here and it can get very messy quite quickly. So the better option is going to be to essentially put all of your JavaScript code inside its own separate um, you know, section of the page or its own file and then do your event handling inside there. Instead it makes it much easier to work with and of course that brings us to the add event listener function. 
Okay, so add event listener is going to be the preferred way for you to add events to your JavaScript code and of course your web page. So right here we can see we get a very similar example. I've got the exact same div with an ID of box, but now I've opened up this script tag right here and I've specified some JavaScript code. Okay, so essentially it's going to do the exact same thing and I can show you this right now. So going inside the browser, we can see upon clicking on the box, we get right here, hey, decode. So now, uh, looking at the actual code itself, um, we can see in the JavaScript, uh, the first line of code here is simply grabbing the actual div from the HTML. So right here, I'm just saying um, a new constant or new variable um, called box div is equal to document.getElementById and I'm passing in box right here. So for those of you who don't know, essentially, if I pass in box right here, it's going to grab this div and now essentially this div refers to this box div right inside the JavaScript code. So now I'm just simply saying box div dot add event listener and I'm passing through here the click event. So similar to the previous example where we had the mouse over, you can also pass in mouse over inside here and that is also going to work. Like I mentioned earlier, there are many different JavaScript events to use. So you're going to have to do your own searching and find out what you need for each different scenario. But let's go back to the basic click event right here. After this, we're simply specifying a JavaScript function right inside here. And I'm accepting the event object right there. So we're going to get to this very shortly. But for now, we can simply ignore that. And then going inside the actual function body itself, I'm then saying alert, hey, decode. So essentially, we're moving the alert call from inside the HTML in the previous example to this function right inside here. And this makes it a lot easier to work with. And essentially, you're going to have a much better time writing your JavaScript code inside the script tag or an external file compared to inside the HTML. So, of course, we saw how that one works. Now, what if I was to, um, instead of specifying the function right here, we can actually specify it externally. So this right here is another example of what you might see. So if I was to specify a function right inside here, I can say function and call this function handle box click. So essentially this function is going to do the job of handling the box click. So now I can also accept the event object as we did earlier. And then I can simply move the alert code inside here. And then instead of having this function right here, I can instead just say handle box click just like that. And that is going to give us the exact same result. It is simply just a different way of writing it. And you might see this example or style also. So if I was to save this, we can see we get the exact same result. We can click and we get hey decode. So now we're going to move on to taking a look at the event object right here. So let's look at that right now. Okay, so moving on to the event object, I'm referring to this E right here. Now I know this E confused me quite a bit when I first started learning JavaScript, but it's actually very straightforward in what it actually does. So essentially, this E or the event object contains information about the event which has just occurred. In the case of the click event, you can find many different uh, pieces of information about that click. For example, you can see if the user was holding down the alt or the control key when the click occurred or even the position of the mouse. Now, to gain access to the event object, you simply pass through a name for the event object right here inside the function. Now, of course, you can call this whatever you want. For example, it doesn't need to be E. We can say EV or we can even say event right here. Realistically, we could say absolutely anything like decode, for example, and that is also going to work. But it is a nice convention to simply use E or EV as the name for the event object. OK, so that being said, we can then reference or use the object inside the function by saying E just like this. Now, 
Right here, I'm simply saying console.log and I'm passing through it. So essentially, this console.log is going to tell me information about the actual object right there um, inside the JavaScript developer console. So now if I was to save this right here and go inside the browser, I can then, using F12, you can toggle the developer tools right inside here, and you may need to switch to the console output right up here to gain access to, of course, the console. So now, if I was to click on the object, we can see, so on the div, we can see right here, we get the mouse event inside the console right here. And notice how it says mouse event. There are many different um, event objects in JavaScript because of course this one right here was a click event. A click event relates to the mouse, so of course we get the mouse event. There is also the keyboard event, for example. So now going inside the actual object itself, we can see there are many different properties related to the event which has just occurred. For example, we gain access to the client X and the client Y, and these are just the, um, the mouse coordinates when the click occurred. We can see we get 108 and 80 right inside here. If I was to click again, this time in the top left corner, we can see the client X and the client Y are much lower at 10 and 10. We also gain access to things like the control key and the ALT key, which of course tell you if the ALT or control key were pressed or held down when the click occurred. For example, we can see now the control key is set to false, but if I was to hold the control key and click again, we get right inside here, control key set to true. So of course, depending on your own uh, scenario or use case, you're gonna find these properties useful. Okay, so of course, it's gonna depend on your own project, what you're doing. Um, you may not need to use any of these properties, and that's perfectly fine, but in many cases, you may need to gain access to this different information regarding the event to, of course, do different things. Okay, so let's, let's move on now to the usage of the, um, of the arrow functions in comparison to the standard JavaScript functions. Okay, so moving on to the final part of today's video, and that is going to be the difference between standard versus arrow functions when it comes to your event handlers. Okay, so right here we can see I have two examples of the usage of the add event listener method. Okay, so right here we can see the first example is very similar, if not the same, in fact it is the same, um, as our previous examples. We're simply saying function and then of course taking through the event object and then we're simply saying right down here, console.log and I'm logging out the value of the this keyword. If you don't know what the this keyword refers to, that is perfectly fine, this is still going to make sense. In the second example, this one right here is probably one of the more modern ways to write your JavaScript event handlers and this one uses an arrow function as we can see right here. So these serve a very similar purpose and they do basically the exact same thing. It's simply just a different way of writing out a JavaScript function. This one is standard and this one is an arrow function. Now we can see I'm also logging out the value of the this keyword. So now, if I was to save this right here, go inside the browser, then click on the div, we can see we get our two outputs right there. As we can see in the case of the first example with the standard function, this refers to, or the this keyword, refers to the actual box itself. So basically, if I go back inside here, in this case, this refers to the exact same thing as box div right there. And that is for standard functions. When it comes to your arrow function, this refers to the whole window global object itself. So the reason why I pointed this out is because of course, if you run into errors where, you know, certain things aren't defined or, you know, certain things aren't working, just watch out for cases where you may be using an arrow function but then using the this keyword. Always make sure if using the this keyword right here, you want to make sure you use the standard JavaScript function instead of the arrow functions right down here. 
If you want to learn more about the arrow functions in JavaScript, I've got a whole video dedicated to that, so you can watch that too if you like. And that is the basics of JavaScript events. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.